Hey, welcome everyone to how to get featured in the media spotlight with my special guest, Ann Noter, who I will introduce in just a minute. But what I'd love for you to do uh, is, as people are coming in right now, I'd love for you to jump onto the chat and say hello, tell us where you're from, and let me know if you can hear, hear me, see me, and all is well. Just type yes if everything is working out well. I'm Tamara Monasoff, and I'm number one Amazon best-selling author and the creator of the Author to Income Formula. And today, I am so excited to introduce you to our special guest. And before we do, though, I'm gonna jump over to the chat and make sure that everyone is coming in and all is well. Hey, Leslie, Lindsay, wonderful. All is well, great, thank you, Dina. Hey, Dina, Barbara, Diane, Francis, Frank, Jerry, uh, Lindsay, Lorraine, Debbie, Barry, Michelle, uh, so many names are popping in. <laughs> this is awesome. So excited that you're here. So let me just take a moment and introduce you to Ann Noter, who Ann and I have been talking. We cannot believe that we have known each other and have been working together for 12 years. And Ann is a former news anchor and she's also the president of Pitch Public Relations and Anne is the go-to guest herself. She's uh, been on CNBC, CNN, CNN and Yahoo, Entrepreneur Magazine. You've been featured all over as the go-to expert Anne. And I think one of the things that is so remarkable about Anne is that she has a knack for taking any client's story and just being able to pitch it and successfully land huge media, which she has done for me. Uh, she, I've worked with Anne. She's got me on the Today Show, Good Morning America, CNN, Oprah, uh, Oprah Magazine, uh, People Magazine. That was a huge one. Uh, yeah. Time Magazine, and the list goes on. And so, Anne, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Tamara. I cannot believe it's been 12 years. That's crazy to me, but I've so enjoyed working with you over the years. I'm so delighted to be here today, so thank you. Oh, we're so excited to have you, and I know that we're going to have lots of questions for you. And let me just speak to that for just a moment. Before I ask you our first question, Anne, I'd like everyone to know that I'd love for you to type into the chat immediately when you have a question for Anne, so that by the end of our session today, we're going to go for one hour. So at, at the, at, I don't know, about 35 minutes, Anne, we'll start answering questions. And so put, post your questions as you think of them, and then we'll power through as many as we can get through, okay? So Anne, first of all, I think it would be helpful if we were just all on the same page. So can you let us know, what's the difference first, about the difference between PR and advertising? I'm, I'm so glad you asked that because I feel like there's still a lot of confusion when it comes to media and marketing. Sometimes friends and family say, what do you do again, Anne? You know, we don't, we don't quite get it when it comes to public relations. So, um, you know, really simply, advertising is that paid placement. So with print, you know, you're buying space and with broadcast, you're buying time. It's entirely self-promotional. Um, you're paying for that space and time and you can say what you want about your business, your book, your product. Um, obviously Obviously, you have full control over the message, which is a great advantage, but consumers are pretty savvy about advertisements. Um, with public relations, we're really talking about editorial coverage. So the news media, uh, feature stories, interviews, articles. Um, it's not a paid opportunity with the media. It's more of an editorial news story. And obviously, you don't have as much control over the message when it comes to editorial media but you have this implied third party endorsement. You know, the, the reporter, the news outlet is covering your expertise, your business, your book. It must be credible. It must be a good business. It must be a good book. Um, so that's really the power of PR. I think that's really helpful. And one of the things that I think you and I were talking about is when we started working together 12 years ago, we weren't even talking about online media. <laughs> And it's like the whole world has changed in the last 10 years. So can you talk to us about that just because I think we'd like, before we kind of hone in on the specific tips and things, I'd like to kind of think big picture. 
because when we first started working together, it was really about the main five TV networks. And now it's like this huge shift to online media. So how does that, what does that mean for the author or entrepreneur in terms of getting media coverage? You're right. And it really means that the opportunities are so much greater. Um, to get exposure in the media because it used to be it was really limited in terms of those opportunities. Um, there were only so many networks, there were only so many shows, um, you know, you had uh, some magazines, but now the explosion of the internet means that first of all, all of the media outlets that we know of, that are mainstream, that are um, those traditional news outlets have their own online versions, which is really a whole separate opportunity for editorial. And then there are news sites and blogs, influential blogs that are strictly online that allow for great opportunity for media exposure. So the media is looking and hungry for content. They have so much to fill. They have a lot of space. They have a lot of the news cycle is so much faster. And so the great part about that when it comes to PR and when it comes to the people that are joining us that have businesses and books is that the opportunity is really great for exposure. You just have to be know how to use that media. And obviously we'll get into some of that nitty gritty, but the internet has, has made it easier and has made the opportunity so much greater. You know, that's really interesting too, because when you go on to like the Today Show, you've got a two minute segment and people have to be tuned in and watching at that time. But it seems like with online, it just your your presence, your opportunity to get your message out for a long, long time seems to be there because people are forwarding those and liking them and commenting on those online articles. So it just it seems like the impact is just so much bigger, especially for the smaller entrepreneur or small business owner or an author who you know you want to get magnify your message in a big way but sometimes it's the online presence i think that has that kind of bigger impact don't you think yeah definitely i mean you talked about the the social media impact and that's been huge because when you're getting those stories obviously it has the opportunity to go viral so not only get the social activity where consumers are reading and commenting and liking but there's media momentum that comes with that. There's other pickup from other news sites when they see a specific article run. And so there's sort of this domino effect that happens as a result of the internet where one story can really have a lot of legs that way and get you coverage in a lot of different places. So um, it's an exciting time for media and PR, um, but there also it also means it's a little bit harder to navigate because there's so much out there in terms of news sites, in terms of print broadcast and online. And there is a different approach depending on which type of media outlet you're getting into. And we can certainly talk about that as well. Well, that's a great lead in. Why don't we talk about that? Please t go ahead and tell us the difference. Yeah, well, you know, the biggest thing when we're talking about um, PR and, and, you know, the purpose of this is to give people some real um, actionable things they can do on their own to try to get coverage for their business or book is that you have to really um, pay attention to who you're reaching out to. And so there's opportunity with magazines on a national and regional and local front. There's newspapers um, in markets across the country. Um, there's online news sites that we talked about. There's influential blogs. There's national TV. There's local TV. And so you want to make sure that you're crafting just the right message to just the right audience in terms of those different mediums. And beyond the mediums, there's also different focuses. So there's a, you know, lifestyle reporters, parenting editors, business editors. They're very specialized these days in terms of the beats that they cover. And that's really new in the media landscape too. It used to be that a reporter kind of covered everything. But now if you're reaching out to a specific news outlet, you have to find the contact that's covering the type of story that you're pitching. And so family editors, travel editors, business, book editors, um, guest bookers who do interviews for broadcast TV. There's a lot of different specialties. And so the, the real trick with PR and the, what I want people to get out of this is to understand that they have to really craft the right pitch depending on who they're targeting. Um, you have to sort of find your story here in terms of your book or your business or your product and make sure you're pitching it the right way to the right media outlet. You know, a business editor at the Wall Street Journal is going to have a totally different kind of focus than the parenting editor at Parents Magazine. It's, it's an entirely different pitch. 
but one author or one manufacturer of a product might be able to appeal to both if they find the right story. I think that's interesting because that it is exactly what happened when you pitched me uh, with you know with the Mom Inventor's Handbook. Who knew that you'd get me into things like Bloomberg News and all these business news outlets, and at the same time getting featured in all these parenting magazines? And it really was in wh the way in which the message was. There was a shift in the message, or a, a, just a slight tweak in the message to appeal to those audiences. And that's that's something that people can do on their own to think about to take their book, their story, their business, or product and think, what is the business story here? Well, it might be about my entrepreneurial story, how I shifted from one profession to do this. It might be that you know I launched this product on my own and um, you know, took it to market, and there's sort of a great entrepreneurial story about that. Um, there may be a great travel angle associated with a book that you've written. So what would be that travel angle, or what would be that specific story that you would tell to parenting? So take your business, your book, um, and think about ways that you can craft those different angles for the media because that's going to serve you really well. They're looking, those reporters and editors are looking for stories that make sense to them, what they cover. And the more you can be specific and tailored, the more success you're going to have on the media front. I think one other thing before we move on, Anne, that I thought was really interesting is that when we were pitching my last book, there are many of these uh, these online magazines or uh, online outlets no longer have staff reporters, mm -hmm. and so that was a huge shift that you that I experienced with you, where you'd say, "Okay, hey, Parenting Magazine is interested in your book. Please come up with a, a little mini article with like five tips mm -hmm. that is targeted towards that audience." And then, hey, with the business, whatever business outlet, I think it was Forbes actually, Forbes.com was interested in the exact same book. Right. Okay, now you need to write five bullets to to that will cater to that audience. And in the past, I wasn't providing that content; those reporters were writing it themselves. Right. Have you seen that as a big shift? It, it's a huge shift, and it's gone even beyond what you're talking about with just those bullet point content. So that's really important: is having some things that you can pull out of your book um, or that or your business that you can share with the media that makes it really easy for them to cover. That they can share, you know, with, with your mom inventor's handbook. It was what are your tips, you know, for taking an idea to market, and you sort of outlined and sort of gave away some of that information from your book in terms of bulleted content that the media would run with. Beyond that now, there's a lot of opportunity for just full content placement where you're really writing the whole article that's running on everything from Fast Company to Forbes, Entrepreneur, even Working Mother Magazine and those types of outlets. The staff writers, um, it's not the same that they used to have and as we've talked about, they need a lot of content. They have so much to fill. And so there's opportunity also for authors to be able to craft an entire article that can be placed on those sites. Now the key here is to make sure you're, you're, you're providing some information in those articles. Obviously it's, it can't be self-promotional entirely. We talked about the difference between PR and advertising. With the media, they're really looking for their audience benefit. You know, what is the reader of this article or the viewer, if it's a TV interview, going to get out of this? And so anytime you can provide tips, you can provide insight, you can provide expertise that the audience wouldn't get otherwise, that's going to appeal to the media. And so you should prepare bullet point tips, insight that, that could be easily just pulled for a story and in some cases you can offer to fully write an article to expand on the topic even more and the media will just run that. Huffington Post is another great example so there's a lot of opportunity to just place full bylined content and include your bio. This is a really important tip. Sometimes um, authors or, or companies kind of forget about that. They provide the full article and they, they don't get as much of the benefit out of it as they can. The media will allow you to provide a, a short bio along with that article that can link back to your book, that can link back to Amazon or where you're selling your book or your business website. And so that's, that's the PR opportunity that you get out of providing that content. 
I love that. And so two of the kind of takeaways here, is, or three takeaways here, is, is have some bullet points ready, but really the core uh, is to think through ahead of time what's the benefit to the audience, because that's going to end up helping those staff reporters choose your article over other articles. And then the third is to make sure you take advantage of your byline where you put your name. I mean, I get so excited when I get to have that opportunity because I know how huge that is because those magazines are, have large distribution and you may have one or two sentences in your byline, but that can link, you, link people right back to your website or to Amazon or wherever you want them to go. So I love those takeaways. Well, and, and the purpose of pre preparing some of that content or having that byline is to give away, obviously, some of that information from your book or something about your business, but leave people wanting more. And that's where your bio comes in handy, and that's where people will say, this is a really interesting topic. This author knows what they're talking about. Where can I find out more? Where can I get the book? And that's where the bio can be helpful. So uh, one thing I want to mention that I think is a really important tip, because sometimes people struggle with the why would the, the benefit, uh, the viewer, the reader benefit, and, and if you're not in PR and you don't have a media or journalism background, you might have a hard time figuring that out. You can, you can figure that part out if you ask yourself, why would someone care? Why someone reading this story would care about these bullet points? And sort of answer that question in the beginning, and then you can kind of craft those tips that will provide that viewer or reader benefit. So that's a good way to kind of get to the core of your story. I love that. And so what do you, you know, how do people get ready, you know, before they reach out to, to reach out to the media? I mean, it's important that you have some things done ahead of time. So one of the things could be the tips that you just suggested, like you have pre-written tips. What are some other things that, that people should have ready before they even start contacting the, PR, uh, the media? Right. Yeah, it's true. You kind of have to have those things in place so that you're not caught off guard and, that, and so you're going out with your best foot forward, certainly. Having some tips, even before that, really nailing down the message. What is this book about? That's where sometimes people get stuck and they get stumped in the media on that question all the time. Tamara, tell us about your book. And you know, people sort of freeze because, I know you don't, but sometimes people can freeze because there's so much to say and you don't know where to start. Um, and so before you even get that opportunity in the media, you need to really nail down that message. What is this book about? And it should be two, maybe three sentences max, 20 second answer, a really tight answer to what is this about? Or what is your business about? What is your product about? Um, tell us about your product. Tell us about your book. Be able to answer that really tight. So ahead of time, get that nailed down because the rest of the PR that you need to do in terms of the tips, in terms of the content, will kind of follow. Um, it's also really good to have some sort of you know image of the book cover or image of the product. Um, you know, sometimes that can be tricky when you're doing media in advance, and when we should talk about that too in terms of timelines. But you want to kind of have some of those materials so that you have things to provide to the media. Um, again, they're going to want images, they're going to want content, they're going to want a headshot. If you're an author, you should have that ready beforehand. Um, and so make sure you've got some of these materials, but I would say not to wait too long to start the PR process because that's a real big mistake that authors make, often make, and um, manufacturers of products often make as well. Um, they sort of wait until the book is out. Well, the book is out, now let's start thinking about PR. And I said, we should have done that three months ago. Um, so you really need to think about the editorial guidelines and deadlines when it comes to media. They have lead times. Magazine editors are working on their stories now for Christmas. Um, and so you have to be thinking three months minimum when it comes to magazines sometimes six, where we're talking with like, oh, Oprah Magazine, um, real simple, some of those really um, national glossy magazines, they're closer to six months. But at a minimum, you need to be thinking three months in advance before the book is out or before the product is out um, so that you can take advantage of those and be pitching the media at the time when they're gonna be working on issues 
that will come out once the book is out or once the product is out. So that's a, a real important thing. So you want to kind of have that timeline done ahead of time. Make sure that you're paying attention to those lead times. You want to have a headshot, a book image, or a product image. You want to really nail down your messaging of tell us about the book or, or business. And then beyond that, pulling some content that can be used for the media. I love that because I think you're absolutely right. You're, when you're so focused on getting your book completed or relaunching your book, uh, it, we are so focused on that date as to when we're trying to get that finished that we're not thinking back, okay, wait a second, if I want this, the media to know about my book and for me to get media coverage, I need to be working backwards three months at least. So I, I'm so glad that you brought that up. Also, just from my experience, going on so many different shows. One of the things I'm going to just throw in here too as a tip and is that oftentimes when you're booked on TV, you're working with a TV producer, they say, "Oh great, give you know, make sure you send copies of your books or copies of your products ahead of time." So you send those items and then when you actually arrive at the show for some crazy reason, I'm not kidding, this has happened so many times. Nobody can find your book where <laughs> your products are. And so my advice is even though you think you're you've taken care of everything, you want to bring with you copies of your books and products so that you have it in your hand. And in fact, Anne, I've had it work so many times to my advantage because I've handed the TV host the T the book and then they'll end up holding it up and showing it or, or products. Whereas a lot of times, you know, if you've handed it off to the producer, they're, they've taken it away to do special shots to tease the, you know, yeah. tease the upcoming segment, right? That's exactly right. I mean, oftentimes in the PR process of trying to get them to book an interview or to do a story, we're dealing with, you know, an editorial assistant, a producer. Um, but ultimately, if you end up landing particularly a TV segment, that's not the person who's going to be interviewing you. So they may not have even seen the book. So it's great to be able to have that handy and to be able to have them show it on the air. Remember, you want to take advantage of these opportunities. And although the media is not in it to do you a favor, you want to get out of it what you can. And so you have to be an advocate for yourself in terms of making sure that you're um, preparing them in the best way, giving them really tight messaging about what you do, giving them some possible questions that they can ask, giving them some content, telling them what the book is about, telling them what you really would like to talk about. Um, if you can do all of that, then the segment's better, um, you know, the interview's better, and ultimately what you get out of it is better. So I know you've learned some of those lessons over the years. <laughs> yeah, definitely learned those lessons while in the hot seat. And what you were saying is really true. And oftentimes, if, especially if you're in a newscast and they're up and they're reporting the news and then you're walking up the stage and they're wiring you up to go onto the segment. So you oftentimes don't even have, you have less than a, you know, 30 seconds to a minute to do the things you were just talking about, Anne, you, to, in terms of what you want to talk about in the show. So oftentimes I'll take those seconds while they're wiring me up rather than saying, hey, how's the weather or how are you doing? I say, my book just hit number one on Amazon and I'd love to tell you about X, Y, and Z. <laughs> you know? and well, yeah, I was going to say too, you know, having that opportunity to do that with, with the host or interview is so important. But even before that, doing it for yourself what is the message I really want to give in this interview? What what is this? What do I want this article to cover? Because if you can really zero in on that and make sure that you're you're tightening that message, that will serve you so much better. And so going into it, what is it about this book or product that you want people to know that you want to make sure, no matter what else, you get that in? And so that will first of all help you frame those kind of pitches that I talked about and that tailored messaging and that content that you're focusing on the most important aspects of, of your business or book. And then ultimately when you're doing an interview or you're doing a news story, making sure that you're getting that in. You know, TV is so fleeting and fast. You know, you have an opportunity for a minute 
to three minutes sometimes with a TV interview. And so typically you'll get that you know, first kind of question of, well, tell us about your book or you know, why did you write this? And that can be all, you know, that can take, if you take three minutes to answer that, you're done. So really going beforehand thinking about what are the three things, no more than that, what are the three things you really want to cover, you really want to make sure that you say in this interview, and that will help you in the prep process before that, make sure that you're getting this coverage to begin with. Love that. And also, Anne, I think, you know, there's sometimes a misconception about, media coverage in that everyone thinks they need to get in Oprah magazine yeah. or everyone thinks they need to get on the Today Show, you know, or you're only thinking mass media. But I have to tell you just from the experience that sometimes I will get so much more uh, interest from people when it, it's at a local level or in a smaller market. Can you speak to that? Definitely. Well, you know, a couple of things around that. One is that, you know, you should really take advantage of every opportunity that, that happens with PR because, first of all, uh, there's, there's sort of that momentum that builds. You get a, a smaller stories or some local coverage, and then you kind of expand beyond that, and all of a sudden you're starting to get some additional features here and there, and eventually you, you might, you know, get a, a better, bigger opportunity with, with national. And I'm talking particularly if you're doing this on your own, you know, it's a little bit um, different and, and perhaps more difficult than having someone in PR who's, who's handling all this for you. So take advantage of every opportunity. There, there are certain are a lot of great local opportunities for coverage. Local TV news have morning and midday shows where they're interviewing guests. They're looking for local people to come on. Those can provide great opportunities for coverage. And they have a loyal audience. You know, most consumers still go to their local news as sort of that go-to. So those, are, those can be great avenues for coverage. And there's also sort of this domino effect in PR. Sort of the more press you get, the more press you get. Um, it can lead to other things. I've had clients where they had, um, in one instance, they had a great story that ran in their local newspaper in Seattle that ended up catching the attention of a producer at the Today Show who ended up having them on. Um, I've also had stories, you know, local publications that got picked up by the Associated Press and ran in hundreds of newspapers as a result of that. Um, stories online that got picked up by Yahoo or AOL or, you know, and, and started running in multiple places. So even smaller, seemingly smaller opportunities can be good avenues and can lead to other things. So definitely um, doesn't mean you have to be shooting for, you know, the national coverage right out of the gate. I love that. And so tell us, if you will, first of all, I want to invite everyone, please Type in your questions as you're thinking of it, because when we get there, we're going to start an an Anne's going to start answering them right away. And one of the, I'd love to know, Anne, since we're talking about some tips for you know, you've given tons of tips already, uh, but what are some secrets that you can reveal that might really help people uh, land that coverage? I think the biggest thing is we've talked a little bit about tailoring the pitch, but how do you do that and how do you craft this pitch? So here's some really good tips that I hope people will be able to use that they may not know. One is, you know, as we as we talked about, make sure that you're matching the angle to the reporter, the beat that they're covering, making sure that you're it's a, it's a really good match. Your subject line in the email is so important. Um, you know, we would never have done, you know, Tamara Monosoff's new book about mom inventors. It's just too long. The whole idea is to try to just intrigue them, um, get them to open it, get them to want to learn more. And then the pitch itself should be no more than two to three short paragraphs. And your first line, your first sentence for the media pitch should really be, what is the story? Why would anyone care? What is the angle that you're pitching? You have to get to it right away. You can't start with, you know, I wrote this book. I wanted to write this book five years ago because of this and, and give a lot of backstory because you're not giving the whole story. You're just giving enough to get the editor to want to cover or the reporter to want to do a story. So think of the pitch in those terms. Um, it should be really short and to the point. You want to also make it really easy for them to cover. I have uh, great tips to offer up. I can craft a bylined article on this subject. 
I can come in and do an interview in your morning news, depending on who you're pitching to. Make sure that you're, I have images, that you're giving them the materials in that pitch so they say, okay, this person has all the things they need. We could easily run this story. We could book them as a guest or I can do a, get that content from them and run a story. You want to provide some of that in the pitch so that you're making it really easy. And here's one last tip about the pitch itself. Be specific in terms of what you want. So we've talked a little bit about different media. If you're trying to get on your local news and you're pitching that type of producer, then you should be saying, I'd love to be a guest on the morning show where I can provide more insight into this topic and give some great tips for your viewers. If you're trying to get an editor to run some of your content, you should say that. I have great content that would be terrific for your site. Let me know if you're interested in taking a look or here are some bullet points that would be included in an article. You don't wait for them to kind of read between the lines of how they could possibly work with you on a story. Give it to them straight up in that pitch. So I think using some of those tips will, will help um, folks be a little more successful in landing coverage. I love that. And can you speak also, because we do have uh, fiction authors as well as nonfiction okay. authors. And so it would be helpful to know, like, how does a fiction author tailor this? It be Because it is more about the story, isn't it? I mean, how, how do you do that? Yeah, it is. You know, you know, we're talking a little bit more about people who are writing sort of self-help type books where they can pull content and tips. But certainly um, fiction books, you know, what's interesting about this story? Why would people be intrigued? What is what is kind of the the you know main points of, of this book that, that you can get out of it? And so there's a there can be a human interest element to it that would be interested to people. It doesn't have to be tips, it can also just be insight or nuggets about the story. Um, so you still want to really narrow down some of that. And I think with, with fictional writers too, there's a lot of opportunity for features type stories um, and, and news articles on summer reads where they're, you know, editors are, are picking specific books that would be terrific for people to take on travel or, you know, now that the kids are back to school, here are some good reads. And so there's a lot of opportunity for those types of of you know write-ups and articles that people can do and then in terms of still being interviewed um, you still want to make it kind of teasable and interesting and, and give away a little bit about what the story is about to get people kind of excited to read more. Love that, thank you. Now you and I were talking about this earlier that one of the, the ways to get featured is that sometimes you have to be willing to do backflips. <laughs> and you and I were talking about this earlier because I reminded you of when you called me, you know, about with my book launch about the Today Show. I remember exactly where I was sitting. I was I had been just writing and writing and writing, and I hadn't had my hair cut in a couple of months. I was so not in that mindset. And you called and said, they had a cancellation. Can you get on a plane? This is, by the way, this was at 5 p.m. in the evening, and Anne is asking me to get on a 6 a.m. flight the next day, and I was like, what? <laughs> but you did it, right? <laughs> yes, I did it, but, I mean, it really, like, I had to, like, pull myself together and realize, okay, I'm not going there with a haircut. I'm not going there with a, a thought-through outfit. You know, how can I shape my message quickly yeah. and so it's really interesting talk about that if you will with the backflips well so yeah, absolutely I mean you really do have to be able to take advantage of every opportunity that comes that way because a couple of things one is that they're not in it to do you a favor or do it on your schedule they're working on their own news timeline so when they need you they need you and sometimes with the media it is that way um, all of a sudden um, they need something today, they have a hole to fill, they have a specific segment that would be perfect, or they, you know, one article kind of fell through and they need something really fast. So you have to take advantage of those opportunities. First and foremost, they might not come again. You know, if a reporter reaches out to you for a segment or a story and you're not able to do it, you're not able to respond quickly, they just move on. You know, they have stacks and stacks of, of pitches that come to them. They have people wanting coverage all over. And so while they, you know, may decide they really want to cover you or interview you or write about your book, if you're not able to respond quickly, they, they will move on to something else. And so 
a couple of takeaways from that. One is be open to every opportunity, even if you don't think it's absolute best outlet or the perfect story that you had in mind. Um, be open to, to those kinds of opportunities because as we've talked about, it can lead to other things. It, it can translate really well in terms of those stories. And then be able to be flexible about the timing to make sure that you're you know, taking advantage quickly, that you're responding quickly, getting them what they need quickly. Um, you are so good about doing that. And, and the great thing about that, Tamara, is the media noticed. And you really did become the go-to person because first of all, they knew you would be there on time. You would be there when they needed you. You were open to talking about different topics. You had content. You made it really easy for them. And that's what they're looking for. And so a lot of times, too, it's about about kind of building that relationship with the media and um, making sure that you're kind of coming through when they need you so that you can use those opportunities again and again. Yeah, I love that. Thanks for mentioning that, Anne. And I think what happens too is at the end of those segments when you do all those things for them, oftentimes they'd say to me, next time you're in town, I want you to come back. That's right. So that's what you're wanting is to create that type of relationship where they know they can count on you. Absolutely. I mean, the whole idea is really to make it easy. I keep talking about that, but making it easy for them to cover. Um, they just don't have a lot of time. And you know, it used to be a little bit different with, with media and they would have time to come out and do interviews and um, or talk on the phone and, and spend time writing, helping, you know, craft that content message. But it's just not like that anymore. And so they're moving so fast. The news cycle is so fast and they just don't have a lot of time. And so one thing to make it, you know, increase your chances for coverage is to make sure that you're saying that you can provide these things and have these materials that they need and you can come in for an interview or you can provide tips or content or an article um, and, you know, make it really easy for them. One snippet I did want to mention too for, for you were talking about fictional writers too, uh, sometimes it's just giving away a chapter, a chapter pull that, um, that media can run. We've had a lot of success with that where they'll just take a little short part of the book and run it as kind of a, you know, sneak preview or giving um, readers a chance to, to get a little bit of a, a glimpse. Editors love to do that because they're sort of giving their readers something that they wouldn't otherwise get and that's a great way to get people interested in the book. I love that. So tell us some DIY do-it-yourself tips for finding those producers and editors. Like how when people leave today and if they're like, okay, I'm ready, and yeah. they, they want to actually find those people, how do, how do they go about it? Yeah, you know, obviously, you know, PR firms have their own contacts and databases, but there are tons of ways you can do it um, on your own in terms of finding reporters. And my gosh, the internet has made it so much easier in that regard because they, they used to be sort of these um, faceless names you could you could never find, but now they're really out there. So a couple of ways. One, first of all, with magazines, um, is to be kind of a consumer of news. You know, if you if you open a magazine, they, they list the articles, editors of all their sections. Um, you can see who's covering specific second sections in magazines and, and, and find their names. Um, once you figure out sort of the email formula for a media outlet, it's the same across the board. If it's first name dot last name at Forbes.com, it's going to be the same for all those writers in, in most cases. So if you can kind of find that formula and find the name, it, it can be easy to, to contact those reporters. Um, LinkedIn and social media is a, is a huge um, opportunity there to connect with reporters. First of all, make sure that you're following producers and news sites online so that you can be active in what they're covering. So if you see something that they're working on that's a fit for your business or your story or expertise, you can you know be able to email them directly right away and say, hey, I have something related to this. Would you be open to, to looking at more information, a pitch from me? Um, so following them on social media, looking for them on, on those social sites. Um, for local news, you can don't be afraid to use the, the new invention of the telephone um, <laughs> and call because they will tell you. If you say, hey, I have a great um, segment that I would love to try to contact the morning producer about coming on and doing a segment, who would be the right contact? They'll tell you. They'll give you the email information. Remember these um, local stations in particular, they want to connect with local people in the community who are writing and, and coming out with new businesses and have things to share. So you can do that to find out that kind of contact information. The other thing is if you don't have a specific contact or the exact right contact, but you maybe have someone else at that news outlet, 
it's okay to email them and say, I'm looking for the right fit for this. You know, I have a book on nutrition that's coming out in a couple of months. Who can, who can I contact that might be the right fit? And for the most part, you know, people will try to help. So you might get a response that way from someone saying, here's the editor who, who would cover that. It does take a little bit of legwork and a little bit of digging, but the information is out there. I, I love that. And you, what you said about don't be afraid to just reach out, pick up the phone or email, because it's so true. And what I found is that it, I almost feel sometimes that the media is desperate because, you know, here we're sitting on this side, our side of the table, and we're sitting there going, why would they want to interview me? Right. And then they're sitting there going, I need stories desperately. I and need stories. So, yeah. Okay. They want to hear from you. And, you know, when I was in TV news, we were responsible, um, even as a, a news anchor, I was responsible for coming into the morning meeting every morning with three story ideas. And sometimes there were days when I was just like, oh my gosh, I, I you know, there's nothing. I can't find anything. And so I would have loved it if someone would have called and said, hey, I'm a local person and I have this great business or I just wrote this book. You know, it would have given me an idea. Maybe it wouldn't have been something I would have done that day, but it would have been something I could have filed to do later. So they're, they are looking for content and they are willing to share contact information. Don't be afraid to do that. Don't be afraid to email um, and look for names, look for articles. Um, if, if you have a particular news site that you're really interested in getting on, search around a little bit on the site to see who's writing about this particular topic or you know covers this kind of story um, oftentimes their emails are just w within the byline of their story so more than ever these reporters do want to be contacted um, they want their stories to be shared on social media and so the more you can connect with them that way um, and so those are some good ways of trying to at least find the right people they're excellent tips and it's so true what you said because in the past when I started they were hidden. It was took everything to find these people. And now you go on LinkedIn, you type in Today Show, and they're connected with all the producers on the Today that's Show. Right. I mean, it's just that's like right. amazing. So that's fantastic tips, Anne. So tell us what are some mistakes that people can avoid when they are reaching out to the media. Yeah. Well, a couple of things. I mean, there's first of all, there's um, there's this you know sort of old fashioned concept of a press release that's not quite as appropriate anymore. You really don't have to have a press release to be contacted in the media. A press release is really for um, you know a major announcement that a company might have, might be financial or funding or something like that. And even in those cases, it, it still um, you know has to be used in the right way. Instead, these sort of tailored pitches are what can be effective. So thinking you have to have something formal in terms of a press kit or a press release is, is a mistake that oftentimes people make. You don't. You just have to have the right story and angle that we've talked about, come up with some really good messaging that will work for a story. Another mistake that we've talked about a little bit but is just waiting too long, you only have one opportunity in the news to be new to have a new book, to have a new business, to have a new product. I mean, after that, there are all kinds of ways to keep the PR going, but it's not necessarily brand new. And so that's oftentimes one of the first questions we get from our contacts about books, about products is, well, when did it come out or when is it coming out? And if we say, well, it came out six months ago, uh, they're less likely to feature. Doesn't mean there's no chance, but they're less likely, and we have to be creative about making it current and fresh again. So, you know, waiting too long to do the PR is a mistake because you have this window where you can say, oh, it's coming out in two months, or it's hitting in, in three weeks. You have this sort of freshness or newness about the book or the business that you really want to take advantage of. Um, and the other mistake is just not nailing down that message so that when you do get these stories, you're not getting what you want out of them. So make sure that you're tailoring that and thinking about that ahead of time so that when you have these opportunities, they work for you, um, that they translate, that people click on them and, and want to know more and want to buy the book or want to come to your business. Um, make sure you're doing that so that you can get the most out of those media interviews and, and articles. I love that. It's really helpful. And also one of the mistakes I know that you and I talked about is that when you have that opportunity and you are on TV, for example, and even in articles, is forgetting to mention your website, your product name, your book title. 
and talk about that because I think you see that a lot. A lot, and it's and we do media training now um, for a lot of clients to make sure that they're prepared. But it's it's something because it does happen when you're in the midst of an interview where you happen to the reporter will say, "Well, tell us about your book," and you say, "Well, this book is about." this but you never say the name of it and they never say the name of it and it, it's an unfortunate mistake but it does happen because you kind of get in that mode of saying well tell us about your product well my product does this and you talk about it in those terms but you're never really saying the name and in fact you should be saying it over and over again in an article or a TV segment because it takes a couple of times for the consumer for it to register and you it increases your chances of getting that name in the article or in the interview. It can feel sometimes uncomfortable to say my product and actually say the name or to say the title of the book. Um, but it's important. Again, you have to advocate for your own business, your own book, and it's important to get that out there. So think about the questions ahead of time of, you know, tell us about this. What do you want people to get out of this book? Or how does this uh, product solve a problem? Um, and be able to answer those questions by saying the name um, of your business, of your book. It's so important. It seems so easy, but I, I've had, I had one client years and years ago who never said the name of her company on the Today Show ever. Oh. And she just kept talking about it in, um, in those terms. And um, afterwards, she was so frustrated and disappointed that she forgot. So um, try to get in the habit of doing that. And when you're, you know, if you're telling a friend or anybody about your business, you should be saying the name of, of what you have to offer. I am so happy that you mentioned that. Okay, we're getting tons of uh, questions, so I'm going to switch over in just a second. But that is so important, and because I think there, I personally, I, you feel a little shy about it, right? You yeah. feel like, oh, I'm being so self-promotional when I'm saying the title of my book and the name of my product. But P, I also, as when I'm a listener, and I want the book that they're talking about or the yeah. product, I'm like, say the name. I don't say know what the name, name is. And you're so you know? Yep. Yeah, so that your listeners and viewers are begging you yes. to say the name. Right, exactly, exactly. Okay, so let's jump off and, okay, so I look like there was a little weird glitchy thing that happened and some people had went off and went on, but it looks like we're good to go now. So okay. I'm going to start from the beginning. We have lots of questions here. Okay, let me see. <clears throat> All right. So, so Jenny says we're in a situation right now where we're more established, uh, a more established competitor is trying to stop us from entering the market by saying we are infringing on their patent. We are finding out that, uh, uh, okay, so this is about a patent and thing. So we're not going to cover this now, um, but I, it's about, you know one of the things you can do, Jenny, when related related to. PR is get your own story out there, right, Anne? If you're having all these issues, that one of the th ways to kind of stay ahead of the game is by getting your own story out, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I mean, I don't know what the situation is, obviously, with the particular patent or what's going on with that and whether, um, you know, you have to be careful for legal purposes. But in terms of competition in general, you know, we get this question a lot where someone will say we have, there's another similar product and, and you know, we're trying to deal with this. And one of, that's where power, PR can be so powerful because you want to sort of stake your claim um, to your business in the media and, and take ownership. And one of the ways to do that is through PR to make sure that you're out there because it becomes a lot more difficult if all of a sudden you have all these news stories about your business or, or product and um, you know, that's something that's in the public domain now. And so you want to kind of take ownership and take advantage of those opportunities. Um, if you're not doing it, you know, your competitor is, and that's really easy to kind of get lost. So absolutely, I mean, your story, what makes your product different, what makes it better, um, using some of those differentials to craft your messaging can help too, so that when you get some of that coverage, it really highlights what's special about your product or company. Okay, great. Nancy has a, a great question too. She says, what if, uh, what if your book is already out there, like you've already launched, and you yeah. haven't done PR ahead of time? What can right. you do? I know. Well, don't feel bad, because I know we've talked about lead times, but it is very common for this to happen, where obviously you've spent all this time on the actual book, and now it's, it's you feel like, actually, you know, maybe you're a little bit behind in terms of the PR, but there's still lots of ways um, to get coverage. And so... First of all, it's still new. If the book is launched, it's still new because you haven't had coverage for it. If you haven't done PR and you haven't had coverage, in the media and consumer's eyes, it can still be fresh and new. So you want to still make sure you're using that language in your pitches that you talk about it being a new book. 
Um, it still is, and you can take advantage of that language. You don't have to be specific um, in, in the pitch. You can still talk about it be, being new. And is there some way that you can make it especially timely now? So it kind of depends a little bit, obviously, on your book, but is there something that's relevant about it that's in, that's in the news that's kind of a tie-in? Is there something kind of seasonal about the book that's um, more appropriate now or more relevant now? Any ways you can do that in the PR will help, um, but still, it's still new, it's still fresh. You can still talk about it being just launched or just out. Using some of that language will help you kind of stay in that new space. Um, but we didn't talk about ways to make things relevant and timely, and so I, I did want to give that tip because if there are ways you can do that in your messaging and pitching, the media will definitely respond to that. Why would we cover this now as opposed to six months from now or six months ago? And if you can kind of answer that question a little bit, it will help. I love that. Tell us about if you have two things. Lindsay's talking about she has two things that she's offering. And okay. one is that she's recording an album with songs, and she's also writing a book that it, it kind of go together. So if you're pitching the media about that, how do you deal with that when you kind of have two different aspects of what your story is about? Right. Well, a couple of things. I mean, one is that it sounds like they sort of tie together. Is that right? It's not, it kind of, they yes. kind of tie together. So I think in that way, um, you should be talking about them in the same way. So it's, again, the pitch is not so much about highlighting a product as it is the question that we talked about. Why would anyone care? Why is this, this, you know, album and this corresponding product sort of why was why is this a solution or why would people be interested in this so if you can kind of answer that collectively um, and talk about that, that story in the pitch you certainly can mention both products and in some ways that's a that's an advantage because um, they sort of go together it's it's more substantial in terms of the story we have two aspects of this or two ways the reporter might be able to cover it so don't focus so much on pitching the product or products in the pitch, but again, the story, the why would anyone care, why is this interesting, um, and, and kind of craft it more that way, but then you can definitely mention that there's two products associated with this, and I think that's a good, can you offer to send a sample or have them review it, um, have them take a listen, or whatever the case may be. So I think you should, you should definitely be making sure to include that messaging in your pitches. And, okay, great. And you know, one of the things I teach in the Author to Income formula is not only about launching your book, but relaunching. Because sometimes authors have had disappointing results, where they work so hard, put their whole, their whole heart and time and effort into writing their book, and then when they get it out there, really nothing happens. And so I talk about relaunching the book. So with that said, how, and you talked about this a little bit in terms of, you know, it's not too late, even if you don't do it ahead of time. Yeah. So now let's talk about relaunching. Is there a way to do that to make it newsworthy and compelling. Absolutely, you know, the, the biggest thing is to talk about that this is still a current topic. This is still um, a book, you know, you mentioned books especially, so this is still a book that is relevant now, and so, but why? You know, be able to kind of answer that question in the pitch, but absolutely, I mean, that sort of obviously takes away the, the newness part of it, but there's still aspects to the story that people need to know. There's still things in this book that people need to know, and what are those things, why? If you can kind of take some of that and make the this, this story sort of fresh and relevant, I mean, that's the biggest aspect of the media, is they want to know, you know, why is this kind of a story? Why would people be interested in this currently? And so that's kind of a way to make it sort of fresh and new, even if the book may have come out before. And remember, there's a little bit of spin in PR. You know, you don't have to tell everything. So you don't have to talk about that the book was out and this is a relaunch. It's just, you know, just talk about it in its current state. Um, that's the whole thing with PR and media is, you know, you're not giving away everything and every piece of information and all your sales and all your struggles. Um, there's a little bit of hype and self-promotion that that's part of PR. And so think about it more in those terms. I love that. And that was part of Elda's question that you just answered. But, you know, she has a topic on infidelity, pre uh, prevention of infidelity. And I know some other authors in my group have some really kind of spicy topics. Yes. And are those things picked up, you know, easily in the media when they have that kind of, you know, 
those types of topics about infidelity and things like of that nature? Absolutely. Well, you know, um, we didn't talk too much about this. I know you and I talked about this once before tomorrow, but just with the rise of mobile media, you know, as consumers, we're getting pieces of information and little snippets on our phones and mobile devices as opposed to watching a full news broadcast from start to finish or reading a full newspaper. There's like little nuggets of information. And because of that, because people are reading on mobile devices, the media really wants teasable stories, you know, those kinds of, of headlines that get you to click and so absolutely if you have topics like that that you can sort of play up and tease a little bit that's really um, has a lot of media appeal you know we were doing the mom inventors handbook it was you know it's five secrets from for taking an idea to market and those are the kind of stories that you see right on mobile devices where you just can't help but click and read the story and they often want slideshows where they're showing a, a particular tip and then a corresponding photo and then another tip and a corresponding photo as opposed to just full copy the way that it used to be in the media, very image driven. So those kinds of topics for books are great because they're very teasable, they're very interesting to the media because they think they can craft the kind of stories that will get people to read on mobile devices. Okay, awesome. We're, we have like six minutes left, so I'm going to do okay. a couple of things. One is we have more questions, and okay. I also want to give everyone just your email address. I know it's like amazing. Okay. <laughs> Let me just say this. Anne has offered all of you as part of my community, thank you, Anne, I, had, I just am so grateful, to email her. And so she, what Anne has requested is if you do email her, that you are uh, you are PR pretty you're ready right and like you've yeah. had your your book is written or well actually you're like ready to launch at least you're at that three month mark uh, where you're going to launch in the next three months your product is ready to go why don't you talk about that and I'm going to put up the slide with your email address. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I think if you're if you're ready for PR, or you think you're close to being ready, something that you want to do, you want to kind of take that leap. I'm absolutely happy to connect with you. And in fact, you know, it's hard sometimes with these kind of um, webinars or this type of environment because it's hard to be super specific because obviously you have people on here who've written fiction books and other people who have expertise in marriage or nutrition and then you have people who've launched products and so I'm, I'm trying to give advice that I think would be applicable across the board but I can't sometimes be super specific so if you think you're ready if you feel like you're ready for PR you kind of want to take that leap I'm happy to do just you know a quick consultation with you to give you some more insight that would be specific to your book or business and kind of help you a little bit with that strategy so I yeah I love to hear from people and I, I love the questions it's good questions yeah and great so I want to switch back to the questions because there's so many more coming in okay. so just so you have that on your screen right now there's Anne's direct email address Put Tamara in the subject heading so she knows that you're coming from here yes. and that she's offered to give you a 15-minute media consultation from her or a member of her team yes. if uh, you are ready to roll with your media. Okay, yes. so with that said, there's and there's a couple of questions. Cheryl and Marcy both want to know the answer to the same question, so I'm going to jump in. Okay. How do you find what stories, like what TV shows are – what, what they're working on and so that you're able to pitch them based on what they're working on. Right. right. Yeah. There's a couple things. I mean, for magazines, they do have, they do usually publish editorial calendars of stories that they have already in the works. You might have to do a little bit of digging online to find those, or you can contact, actually, this is a good tip. You can contact the advertising department of magazines to get their editorial calendar. That's what you want to ask for because they obviously sell space in those issues if they're doing, um, you know, back to school story or whatever um, specific stories in those magazines they may be working on. Um, you can you can get that information and then pitch accordingly. Remember, magazines have a long lead time, so you've got, you're going to be pitching them well in advance of those editorial calendars. For more short lead media like newspaper, online, and TV, there are a couple of resources out there. Uh, one good website is Help a Reporter, helpareporter.com, um, and media reporters will will put the topics of the stories that they're working on and they're looking for experts or they're looking for interviews or businesses that fit this or authors. So that's a good resource too to find stories that are already in the works. Um, so it doesn't mean you can't still do this kind of pitching that we talked about where you're being proactive and suggesting ideas, but these are way to find, ways to find stories that are already in the works as the question, great question. Okay, great. That is a great question. And listen, I mean, a great answer too, because uh, people are, 
um, again, man, I mean, I want everyone here to realize that the media really does need you. They want you and you can, they're, you know, Haro is really good. I just put that into the chat, by the way. Okay. Uh, okay, so another question, and I think this is an interesting question, is how do you avoid a question that's difficult from the media? For example, uh, Linda asks, you know, and the question is, well, how many books have you sold? And you know, you let's say you're just launched. I mean, how do you how do you answer it gracefully, but without you know making yourself feel embarrassed that you've sold five copies? <laughs> right. I know. Well, you know, a couple of things. One is that um, this is a question oftentimes that reporters ask for businesses, like tell us about your revenue, or with authors, tell us about how many books you sold. But it's almost almost never do people you know, reveal those answers. So in a lot of ways, reporters are asking those questions, but not always expecting you to answer them. So there are a couple ways you can spin it. I mean, what if it's about like how many books you sold or anything like that? You can talk about the fact that the that it's just launching. It's just new. And we, we actually are just now starting to get the word out with this kind of media to tell people about the book. So kind of you're in the early stages. Um, the other thing is to tout some of your, to kind of go back a little bit to some of like your expertise or your bio to tout a little bit why you have credibility as an author. Um, and the same question for businesses that sometimes get the question about like revenue, how much sales they have, that can be really uncomfortable too. So you can talk about growth. Well, I, over time we've grown to, you know, we've quadrupled our retailers, even if you've gone from one to just, you know, a handful, or you can talk about, we've grown 100% over the years. You can talk about growth. You can talk about the thought, the product is now sold nationwide because you're online. You can use some of those terms um, with the book. It's now available nationwide because it's on Amazon. You can do some of that, but a lot of times reporters are asking that, but not necessarily expecting an answer. And it doesn't always hinder you or prohibit you from getting coverage because you don't have those strong answers answers. The real thing is to make sure that the story and the pitch is strong and they won't care about how many sales you have. Love that. And that's really helpful to have that type of information because I know that you know people worry about those things yeah. and I was put on the spot many times with those types of questions. So I love how, how you advise us with that. So our time is up, but I do want to say that people are sharing their love and and just saying how much they appreciate your tips and time today. I, Annette Giacomazzi says, I can attest to pitch uh, to pitch and the ability to generate great press for cast covers. And she said it was years ago and I'm still getting publicity even today. So that is pretty cool. Oh, hi, Annette. That's so nice. I'm glad to hear that. Yeah. So, and Thank you so much. So if you want to reach out to Ann, it's Ann at PitchPublicRelations.com. And, you know, just reach out to her, put Tamara in the subject heading. And with that said, Ann, wow, this was an action-packed hour. So thank you so much for your time. Oh we could have done another hour. It went by so fast, and I'm, and I'm happy to do it with you anytime. But I appreciate everyone joining. I hope they got some good tips out of it, and I'm, I'm happy to hear from them individually as well. So don't be afraid to reach out. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Anne. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Take care. Bye-bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.